closure on this one, my hips are super tight. So um, this one's actually really, really good for me, but I'm not somebody that can go as low as Grandmaster CK2 because this one's really good for me because it, it <laughs> works on my hips. So just a couple things uh, before we look at the book. The idea of hips in this one is a little bit, it's a little bit different. It's not necessarily the muscles of your hips, it's really the connective tissue and the joints, I mean the, the, the joint space in your hips. So if you can think about relaxed, loose hips, you know, which we think about, is, it's one of the eight points of Mekong, loose hips. It's learning to be free in the socket of the hips and all the connective tissue that uh, guards the hips, of which there is a ton. I mean, of course, it's going to work with the muscles, too, but it's a little bit, it'll feel different, and your attention will be different if you're not thinking, oh, I'm just stretching the groin, and this, it's, it's a little bit different than that. So it's, think of that first. Um, I'll do a couple, and then we'll read the book, and uh, I'll tell you the things that I think of, which maybe will be game changers, and maybe they won't, but feet together, tuck. Like you've heard me say, if you lose your tuck as you step out, you will never get it back without stepping out and starting over. So tuck, first and foremost. And then, stepping out, I'm thinking knees out the whole time. And I'm trying as best I can to keep my feet at the same angle. They're naturally going to want to do this and this. And I'm trying to not let that happen, particularly if I'm not stepping out that far. The farther you step out, naturally it's going to happen some. Okay? That feels about right for me. I'm trying not to, because my hips are tight, I know it looks like I'm tilting over. I'm trying to sit upright. I'm feeling it deep in the crease of my hips. Now, when I'm here, I hope it kind of looks like I'm equally weighted on both my legs. I'm not here, and I'm not here. I'm in the middle, and I'm letting gravity sink me down while I've got my tuck. I really feel it in that hip crease. I'm rounding out with my knees, and then I turn my shoulders to the front and let gravity continue to do the work as best I'm able to tolerate. All right? I'm still really thinking of rounding that out, and I'm really thinking of rounding this out. It may not look like it because of the tightness in my hips, but that's my intention. And then I'll push off. Oh, feel it. Ouch. No, it's not an ouch. It's a good feeling. It does for me. I know. It, um, it's a, it feels like when you're working on these areas, it, it's almost like a gummy sensation. Like instead of a muscle pull or a burn, I'm not really feeling it in my muscles too much. I'm feeling it really deep in that hip crease in particular, which is the quad. That is the Chinese, when you hear loose hips, they're talking about the quad, which is essentially the, the, the hip crease there. And by sinking down, like when I push out of it, I feel like blood flow. It gets more, it physically feels warm. So it's opened some stuff up without feeling like, like I do a big hurdle stretch. So it's not really getting my hamstrings. It's not where I'm feeling it, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna read along. Follow along and go ahead and do it. Know that I may be reading longer than that, so come out of it. Like, don't, don't be a masochist. Just try a few on your own and maybe put a couple of ear, ear cells this way so you can listen while you practice. All right, so tuck in the pelvis. Place the hands on the hips and position the feet as in the photograph. That's not helpful. They're basically at a 45 degree angle together. There should be slightly more weight on the left leg, so if you're, if you're starting the back ankle, so that you, Substantial and substantial, because if you don't have weight here, you can't step out. So that's why that is. Do, do, do. He slides, so he's on a, yeah, we don't do that to you. He's on a slippery floor, so he slides out and then holds it. So that's a whole different level of, are you kidding me? Ow, okay, so we step out. So open the legs, stepping out with front foot along a straight line emanating from the center of the body. Oh, he slides his back leg, so he's basically like, like we can't do that on this floor. So step out with your front foot. Try to keep the feet parallel and at a 45 degree angle. As you continue, breathing should be relaxed, continuous, and deep. Slowly open the legs wider, keeping the knees slightly bent as you drop down a few inches at a time and hold each position for a few seconds. The feet should be flat on the floor, on the ground, and there should be slightly more weight on the left foot. The tucked in pelvis should face in the same 45 degree direction as the left foot, while the torso should twist a bit more to the front. Stretch as far as the legs, far, stretch the legs as far apart as possible, and hold the final position for about 
about eight seconds. The feet will no longer be exactly parallel. We'll talk about that. But the toes should be pointed inward as much as possible with both knees bent and the feet flat. The purpose is not to go as low as possible, but to hold your lowest possible position while maintaining the key details of relaxed body, tucked in pelvis, bent knees, the feet flat on the ground, and the weight on the heels and outer edges of the feet. Return to the starting position by drawing up the, rear, the front foot a few inches at a time. This posture can be repeated one to two more times, alternating with right and left. All right, so, yeah, try it a couple times on your own, and then we'll look at a picture, and I'll make some suggestions if I see them. Quick question. Yes, sir, of course. So you're out here, uh -huh. and you're starting to face front. Are the hips going with it? Not so much. Most of just, the torso. Just the torso yeah. and the waist. Correct. Correct. I'm doing it wrong. I'm, yeah. Almost everybody. Yeah. 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 Good. Good. How's that feel? Remarkably well. Good. <laughs> <laughs> and so round out your back knee. Looks like you're caving in just a little bit. Yeah. Out, 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 out. out. And then sit down. Like, yeah. Round out and sit down, and then turn your shoulders and face towards the big field. Oh, and no, don't do that. <laughs> Good. Good. This is it's, it's good for it, provided you can work within the limitations that your body is saying today. About about. So we'll talk about that in just a second. So the farther out, like I'll show you the picture of CK2. He is almost in the splits. So the farther out you go the more those feet are gonna change. So if you know if you're going this far, see his back toes have pointed more this way and his front toes have kind of pointed more that way. That's just natural. That's what's gonna happen. See, he's almost all on the floor. So his back foot is here and his front foot is there. But if he's not, so like here, he's not as far down and his toes are both at that 45 degree angle. Is it desirable to try to get them to raise your angle? You don't have to think about it because it's naturally going to happen. So your ankles are not designed to keep a 45 degree angle if you're that far out. So you don't have to think about your feet other than try to keep them. So we want to be trying to get lower if you can. If you can, but more if you're trying to tell your toes to stay in that 45 degree angle, they won't if you end up in the splits, but you're telling yourself to stay there. That helps with that alignment. Does that make sense? Well, what ha they don't slide, but what happens is um, people will not put, and I, this, isn't a, this isn't a criticism, people won't put that attention in their feet, and then they'll naturally, see, I've already, I'm stepping out with my toes straight. That's not correct. And I've already come out a little bit with my toes. So they do this with straight feet. I can get a little, you saw how I was a second ago. I mean, I know this is the other side. If my feet aren't aligned properly, I can go crazy low. Right? I mean, but it's because I didn't start with the correct alignment to begin with. So, if I think feet here, and I get my tuck, and I winch myself out, see, I'm, 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 I'm being mindful of my feet angle. That's about it for me, which is different than where it was when I, this toe turned out a little bit, but this one is still, you know, I'm not like, straight forward to the roof. Does that make sense? It does. So, if you keep your feet mindfully in that 45 degree angle as you step out and think I want to keep my feet with my toes turned in that will go a long way in helping your form with ride the tiger it's very easy to think I'm going low and you don't even think about your feet if you put one at 90 and one straight ahead and you can <coughs> deceive yourself that you can look oh, high I am low what do you mean and you are you are you're just not doing ride the tiger in the same kind of structural hip releasing way that it's designed to do. Does that make sense? All right, try it a few more times. How about, um, yes, ma'am. The sinking, how should you be conscious of sinking really low to help out or? You mean as you step out? Uh huh. So, yeah, I mean, think relaxed, I mean, buoyant, you know? So, like, I'm, I'm crossed and I'm springy, I'm not here. Right. But I'm also not trying to squat, because that, that's not a tough either, right? Okay. So that's what, take a couple seconds and let yourself like kind of feel springy, like I'm, I'm here. 
and then I, I keep that relaxedness as I as I start to ooch out. Does that does that make sense? Yes, it does. Good, good. So I'm relaxing around me. Yes, sir. Absolutely, yes. Yes. So his question, if you did not hear, is it normal for one side to be less comfortable than the other side or feel like you're stuck more? Totally, yes. Uh, everyone's got a side. Like for me, it's my right side. Right hip is sometimes got concrete in it. I mean, it's just, that's the way it is. So it's, I will feel it at different degrees, but one side is more comfortable than the other, absolutely. So that side that's less comfortable is an invitation to really focus on that. And it's okay if you don't go out as far, but think, sink, relax, breathe, see if you can get a little bit of a release. Yeah. I'm glad you said that. Good, Mr. Lewis. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the crease. In the crease. Good, good. And I wasn't before. So right. obviously I was doing something. Well, it's a, it's a, the, all these poses are super three dimensional. You know? So if you don't have that detailed uh, wording on it, it's hard to know how to focus. This looks really good. Are you feeling it in the hip crease? Oh, I feel good when I did it first. Good, and your feet look excellent. Just getting Excellent. It looks great. Yeah, when I and then you're a little bit on your back leg. So shift into the middle and sink. Yeah. Whether it's what I call tall and small, you know, like, like this is about it for me today. I've got my tuck and I'm sinking down. So whether it's that or you're able to go lower, think about in that hip crease. Like I really don't feel anything in my hamstring, I, in hamstrings. I don't feel anything really in my quadricep. Don't feel my glute. It's, it's this deep hip crease that I feel like my joint is trying to stretch within that capsule. If you have hypermobility issues or anything like that, Listen to your body. Don't go. Don't be. A, don't go bananas. So you know your body, but that's that's the goal of where you're trying to feel this exercise. Make sense? So everybody, let's try try one more each side. And then we'll bow out. Everyone here is doing a good job of keeping the weight in the middle. Oftentimes I'll see students trying to turn this into sort of a lunge or a back stance when really it's 50-50 by the time you get out to where you're going. If you can, sit up. There you go. Harder, I know, like if my hip flexors were tight, like, uh, but yeah, that looks good. <laughs> a little more towards the back here, a little bit on your front leg. There you go. There you go. Round the knees out and then turn your torso towards the Yeah. Yeah. Good, and shake it out. This is definitely one that you don't need to do tons and tons and tons of times. You know, I mean, a few times each side, you're good. Um, if you if you fall over, you're in really good company. It happens. Like it's don't, don't think of it as a, as a crap, I shouldn't have done that. It's like, look at me, I did it. You know, so, <laughs> yeah, you're, it's a, it's, a, it's a badge of honor that you, you know, I've had students like, no, I fell. I'm like, good job. Yeah. Maybe go. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're, hopefully you're a little closer to the ground and you kind of just roll. It's not like an injurious fall. But, um, so, uh, it, do you all have the NACOM book? Yes. yes. Perfect. Because then on that, I think as you know, on that back page, there's a grid that tells you based on your experience level and how long you've been doing Tai Chi, roughly how long you should hold postures and how many repetitions you should do. It's an invaluable resource. Hint, hint, if you are approaching black size test, that last column, that's kind of where you should be at. So like, it's, you know, it's not, it's not magic. It's just that's, you are like, how long should I? Like, there's a page in that book, and if you look in that column, it's pretty, like, be ready for that. Um, it may not get that far, but if you're ready for that, you'll be ready for anything. So, uh, any last questions about Ride the Tiger? Different than what you thought? A little bit? Yeah. Crouching down, feet angle, yeah. tuck. Yeah. Yeah, well, good. I don't think I ever did that before. I don't think that I ever. Well, it's not intuitive. 
Yeah, if somebody doesn't break it down for you, you, you would not have any idea. Because like you hear me say every class, what it looks like and what you're doing are rarely the same thing. So good, good job. Everyone looks great. You can't get this instruction too often. Hmm? You can't get this instruction too often. Oh, well, that's what our jobs are. That's, that's, that's why we do this. So I'm glad, I'm glad it's helpful. So uh, let's go ahead and bow out our crane life skills. Life skill, I should say. The path of self mastery requires balanced emotions. Balanced emotions do not yield to negativity. The path of self mastery requires balanced emotions. Balanced emotions do not yield to negativity. The path of self mastery requires balanced emotions. Balanced emotions do not yield to negativity. Students training at home.